Welcome to Strip Coverlet. I'm Adrian Ford. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here with this week's edition of Harry Potter. Are you no insult this week? You're good? You're comfortable? You happy with it? I don't even... I, I, I don't know what to do anymore. Does, this is Adrian Reed's Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Chapters 32 and 33. Yeah. Rundown time? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you're going to have to help me with what happened in that 33rd chapter. I'm not entirely sure I understood it. Okay. I can work with this here. Uh, chapter 32, we have Flesh, Blood, and Bone. The Triwizard Cup transports Cedric and Harry away from Hogwarts. Uh, Wormtail kills Cedric Diggory. We've had our first real death. Yay. Yeah, that was surprising. Good. Uh, we have the ritualistic resurrection of Lord Voldemort, and the chapter ends with... The Dark Lord has risen. Look at that. Uh, chapter 33, The Death Eaters. Voldemort summons the Death Eaters to his location. He explains his 13-year-old struggle, or 13-year-old struggle of uh, resurrection and how none of them have came to his aid and blah, blah, blah. Uh, very egotistical man. Uh, he talks a little bit about his father and his mother and uh, clears up the questions with Bertha. And then he begins to torture Harry. <laughs> and that's how we end on a high note. Adrian, what do you want to talk about? Talk about that last chapter a little bit. What, what's going on there? So, Voldemort has been resurrected. Yes. On the right or left arm, I forget which one, uh, of the Death Eaters is a, a, a imbued symbol, basically, that is activated by Voldemort. Did you make up a word there? Imbued? Imbued? That's a word. Imbued? Yeah. How do you spell it? I don't know. Okay, carry on. It is a word. Imbued? Maybe. Well, in, no. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Anyway. Uh, but it, it is the symbol that is used to summon the Dark Mark. Okay. Uh, so, Old Voldy comes back to life. He forces the activation of the symbol, uh, and the Death Eaters begin to come to his location. Uh, they all show up, and he goes through the ranks. He says, oh, Lucius Malfoy, good to see you again. Hope you're ready to torture some muggles. Uh, Crab and Goyle are Death Eaters now. Uh, we talk a little bit about the Lestrange family, how they're... Still in Azkaban, because they serve me well. The Stranger? How do you say that in French? Uh, Le Strange. Le Strange. Le Strange. Le Strange. I don't know. It's been a while since I spoke French. Uh, well, I'm I think sure... the je is the e at the end, right? So it wouldn't be j. Yeah. It would be Le Strange. I believe. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, but anyway, uh, and after all that, he basically says, you know, after all these people is a mass, he's like, hey, been 13 years. Hope you guys had a good run. I've been suffering, and nobody has come to my aid. Uh, except for Wormy. Except for Wormtail, and he did it out of fear, not out of loyalty. So, we get some interesting duff stuff going on here. Uh, we do find out that uh, Voldemort's father was a muggle. Voldemort himself is a mudblood. Yes. We want to talk World War II. <laughs> we want yeah, to exactly. talk... The Aryan, the Aryan race is blonde and blue-eyed. Hitler was not, right? Um, flawless, flawless, uh, and, and that—that's pretty much it. Is Voldemort just goes on a rant? But Harry Potter, yes. Why Harry Potter? Why couldn't he take any other wizard's blood? Why Harry Potter? Yeah, uh, he does talk a little bit about uh, the reason he couldn't kill Harry. It wasn't Harry; it was Harry's mother, and it was old magic, basically. Yes. Uh, that's really all you've got so far? But he kept... Her, he. It's not that he couldn't... The part that I'm questioning is not why he couldn't kill him as a child. I understood that. Why was it that he needed Harry to be reborn? Harry to be reborn? He took Harry's blood, not just any other wizard's blood. Oh, he took the blood of his enemy. That's all it was. But he was literally hated by everyone in the kingdom, but those... 12 or 13 followers that he had. I, I think Harry is the enemy uh, that you know of right now because he's the one who, you know, the curse rebounded off Harry and, you know, old magic took its place. But it didn't it have to Voldemort. be Harry. Uh, there is some prophecy coming next book. Okay. It is interesting that, to me that you mention prophecy. Okay. Because Voldemort killed his father. Yep. Where else do we have a prophetic killing of the father? Uh, every, he, not hero's journey, uh, but you, 
every hero's journey requires that you kill your father. Uh, but the well, but to an extent, because you have to you have to kill the previous generation to the to, master must to die yours, so you may become the master. Um, but the Oedipus complex, right? Okay. Uh, it is also interesting that in the Oedipus complex, Jocasta, who was Oedipus's mother, ends up killing herself. Okay. It's also interesting that Oedipus, upon learning of what had happened, blinded himself. Okay. Also worth noting that the uh, prophecy around Oedipus was observed and forced uh, Laius, I I don't know how to say that name, uh, to abandon the child and... uh, Okay, thought you were making fun of me there for a minute. Nope. Scratching Uh, my beard in thought. Which caused Oedipus to leave, uh, before finally the prophecy was delivered. Uh, Also worth noting that Oedipus literally translates to swollen feet. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Translates to swollen feet, uh, and he was named this due to the injuries he suffered as a child uh, and was suffering through when the shepherds found him. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, Why is that last part worth noting? Go on. I have no idea. But it is interesting to me that Freud turned a young man's rivalry with his father... Uh, into what we know as the Oedipus Complex. Freud also said that women enjoy going barefoot to have their toes out because this is how they exercise their penis envy. Uh, That was what Freud said, don't get mad at me. Uh, So it is interesting to me that Oedipus equals swollen feet equals Priapus. Okay. Uh, I always like I always, <laughs> always like to give this excuse as yeah, don't be mad at me. Just remember, Freud did a lot of cocaine. Yeah, a lot of it. And for every bad idea that Freud had, and every obviously kind of out there idea that Freud had, Freud had a lot of good ideas too. Things okay. that, that propelled the science of psychology forward decades. Okay. Had 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 Freud not existed, we would have been left with the Jungian uh, psychology, right? Okay. Well, maybe, because Jung came from Freud. Jung, Jung was one of uh, Freud's students. So maybe we wouldn't even be there. Okay. Uh, now, I think... We, we, we'd be left with Sam Harris today. That, that'd be all we had was neuroscience, not psychology. Uh, I think we can... Uh, we made the argument very clear. This is a very World War II with, you know, the... Uh... Real quick, I'm sorry. On a related note, while we talk about... Uh, penis envy and Freud and things like that. There's that line from Cedric where, uh, as soon as dangerous present, he says wands out. <laughs> well, but but and here here's the thing, is we want oh, everybody yells. Adrian's making everything about sex. Adrian makes everything about sex. Think about it on a very rudimentary level. We are primates, right? We're, yes. We're of that kingdom. We're of that lineage. Um, one of the things that lesser apes do. To intimidate one another, they whip it out. Yeah. Right? Uh, they whip it out, and it's it's a big deal, and they scream and they yell. Uh, if you want to go symbolism, look at any military branch ever. Uh, chevrons are phallic. The sure. more chevrons you have, the better you are. Sure. So, um, what we're doing in this time of danger is whipping it out and getting loud and boisterous. Yeah. Right? Um, one thing in that... Oh, oh, no, you go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just going to interject this here. It just What you need to take from this is if you ever meet Adrian, don't frighten him. <laughs> it's <laughs> horrific. Or go to the Aristocrats channel because I was a little bit intimidated with three other people on set. <laughs> Things may have happened. Uh, but anyway, we have the obvious uh, reflection here of Hitler, World War II. But I think there can be the argument made for some religious overtones here with the resurrection of the almighty one whatever this is a bastardization of the resurrection story uh you also have old magic being uh referenced here uh you also have blood being used in a form of wizardry witchcraft whatever you call it uh blood has its purpose as well marking doors with lamb's blood etc yes um so I, i think there is a lot of religious symbolism in this as well now here's what i find interesting and i always ask when we show up to film harry potter i say adrian Harry Potter getting better this week? You're like, nope. Nope, 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 nope. I think that was just habit. I think these were two better chapters. They were better chapters. That does not make them good. Uh, But there was a lot happening here. There's a lot happening, and there's not a lot of action. Correct? Okay. Because we're not going anywhere in this. This is, But there is a lot we're learning, and there's a lot that's going on here. Uh, So what I was hoping for is Adrian would sit down and be like, hey, you know what? Not bad. Not bad, JK. 
I didn't feel like scratching my eyes out. Okay, well, that's an I improvement. I didn't feel like pulling an Oedipus on myself. An improvement, very much so. Did you so. steal my pen? I probably did. I threw it in my bag, I'm sure. Um, do you need one? It'll be fine. Okay. Hopefully I'll remember. You mention uh, religion. Yes. Where does the... Where do both of the chapters take place? Graveyard. In a graveyard. Do, did you pick up on one major symbol that J.K. Rowling is sure to stick in there? What's that? The yew tree. Okay. There's a little yew, right? Yew tree in the background. Okay. She makes sure that we're looking at that yew tree. Now, yew trees are traditionally, I believe, in British cemeteries or English cemeteries. I'm not sure where the line is for the, the quitting of the yew tree in a cemetery. But do you know why uh, it is she is sure to point it out in these chapters? Tell me the legend of the yew tree. Uh, well, the yew tree is used to represent um, rebirth, right? Okay. Is used to represent resurrection. However, I don't think that enough is alone to, to point it out in this scene of, of uh, regeneration. The yew tree is also prized for its uh, wood when making longbows. Okay. So this also shows us that Voldemort is back, he is reborn, but he means war. Okay, right? very interesting. Also, the yew tree's berries... Are extremely poisonous. Okay. So this is another reason that we're looking at the yew tree in the middle of not just a rebirth, but the baddie coming back. A tainted rebirth. Yes. Okay. So I think that there's a lot of reasons that we point to that yew tree. Because it's it's like um you don't have to point at gravestones, right? Yes. She shows us gravestones. Yeah, we see Tom Riddle's, or uh, the Riddle gravestone. Right, which is the one we need to see. Yes. But she mentions the others, yes. right? They're walking amongst gravestones. Uh, but you mentioned Tom Riddle's. Um, the Because gravestones are always in cemeteries. You don't, right? I, mean, I hope so. I well, mean, I don't know what else you put in a cemetery. But that's what I'm saying, is that you tree in this area of the world is elementary. Yes to a cemetery you wouldn't point to it it is something that you would know is there you don't when you when you show a car when you show characters in a car in literature you don't point to the steering wheel okay because it's there right you don't point to the ashtray because we know it's there so i i think that the reason that you mentioned that yew tree is multiple okay I uh, always have to go the route of striking up conversation to see where Adrian's going to go with things, how he felt about things. Uh, the death of Cedric Diggory. You said that was unexpected. Um, it was unexpected and it was disappointing. Okay. Why so? Because it just happened. There was no fight. There was no battle. There was no... It's just, hey, pop. Correct. <laughs> right? um, I, I think that's okay, though. Uh, because these are uh, these are quite literally adults versus children. Now, Cedric being older at the point. Cedric's 18-ish at this point, uh, 17, right? 17, 18, yeah, yeah. Something like that. 18, I believe. Uh, for some reason, I forgot what the age was to enter the Triwizard Tournament. It's, <laughs> it's what you get for spreading this book out for like three, four well, months. Well, it's 17 to enter, but he is a senior. Yes. Right? This um, is his last go at things. But on the other hand, it is that simple to snuff out life. Boom. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you've got... Three books of build-up with this character, right? He's not in book one, I don't think. If he is, he's mentioned very briefly. I think he's in books two, three, and four. Yes. We're on four. You have three books invested, not entirely with this character, but he's been around. Yes. Right? He's the, he's, he's the main... Uh, he is the main enemy of Harry Potter on a friendly level because of Cho, right? Yes. He has a friendly rivalry with, with, with Cedric. Okay. And he has the love interest rivalry with Cedric. Um... And it just happens. He's just dead. And, you know, it is even said that, you know, he is he has a look of surprise on his face even in death. Because it is very unexpected. And this, I believe, would be very unexpected if you're reading this for the first time as a younger reader. Right. But why make it so easy? Why not at least have suspense built up? Oh, that's kind of the way it works with the Avada Kedavra curse. It's just boom, dead. Right. But what I mean is, boom, dead. But you can, you could have had as a, a writer, I, I, you have set up. You have Wormtail there. Yes. What should I do with the master? Could add a gunfight. Right. You have you have I think two lines of build up. Okay. Um, now I said many times, and I think we finally got to this point. I say you know, the further we progress, the more these characters age, the more we start dealing with adult concepts. Uh, we are now officially dealing with death. Yes. Uh, people are dying. Yes. Um, this is going to progress. We're going to start losing characters here and there. 
Uh, the seventh book, she channels George R. R. Martin and just kills half the cast. <laughs> You're gonna get yelled at for spoiling things. For I me. don't care. People <laughs> die in these books. Excuse me. Uh, but I think it is uh, an adult concept to deal with. Uh, we're going to start losing more characters, yeah. Uh, but we're going to start dealing with uh, the concept of death. Okay. Things along that line. I think it'll be very interesting to talk about. Good conversation there. Um, who is the Death Eater within Hogwarts? That we're referencing the Faithful Serpent. The um, one Faithful Serpent. It's already been mentioned that uh, uh, the one guy I like, who is it? Snape? Snape. It's already been mentioned that Snape was among his ranks. Yes. Um, I don't know if that's who we're going to be expecting or not. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming it's not, but it is being built up to be that, right? Everyone assumes at this point it's Snape, so I'm assuming there's going to be someone that we never expected. Okay. Right? Um, I don't know that anyone would really surprise me, perhaps with the exception of... Um, who's the woman... That's very close to Dumbledore, who... McGonagall? McGonagall. Okay. That's the okay. one that would actually kind of surprise me. Okay. Fair enough there. Um, any questions that you have about these chapters, or where we're going next, or what's going up? Like I said, we had a, a lot happening here, um, but not much that we can pinpoint without knowing more. Sometimes it's hard to break down a chapter when you don't know what's coming next. Uh, that information that is coming next is critical to what we're going to be talking about. Uh, but any questions you had or anything you wanted to discuss or clear up? Um, I think I, besides having to have you explain what's going on with Harry Potter in that second, in that 33rd chapter, I think I pretty much understand what's going on. Um, it is interesting to me to see Voldemort more and more exercise the will to power. Okay. Uh, which is a, uh, a Nietzschean concept that the one thing that really makes life worth living is that will to power okay um and he is he is exercising that voldemort is definitely exercising that to the extent to which um look this is nietzsche is blamed often for the nazis okay um because people say but really the nazis had a perversion followed a perversion of this will to power um, Voldemort is very much doing the same thing. Well, there is that point where Voldemort is literally saying, uh, as you all know, uh, it has been my goal to not die. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I didn't. I survived this, uh, but then it was the struggle. I became the weakest of the weak, essentially, right. is what he said. I can't quote exactly. Uh, so this is proving the struggle of Voldemort. It is proving that will to live, that striving constantly for power... Uh, so much so that he is willing to sacrifice everything for it. Uh, put himself on death's doorstep in order to get better. Right. But he is back now. We do have that. He is back within a body. Uh, his original body. He has been resurrected. Yeah. Uh, he has still a following. He has mass followers. He said he has lost some amongst his rank. Uh, but there are still those who are faithful to him. Here's what I'm wondering. is If Snape's going to show up, cause just enough hell that... Harry Potter escapes and then get killed. Okay. Like, that's the one thing that I can see going on. Because I don't know that anyone else... Moody seems like he could be that powerful. Dumbledore obviously could be that powerful, but he's obviously not this character that, that could show up. Um, we haven't really seen McGonagall's power, but she is intelligent. Okay. So, like, those, those are the only routes that I can see this going. Okay. Um... Um, a lot of these questions are going to be answered uh, within the next three books for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe each one of those will get a, a good example. Okay. Uh, which is very interesting to learn a little bit, little bit more about the characters. Uh, more so than just, you know, like uh, the Pottermore Presents garbage, uh, where it's just an uh, encyclopedia and encyclopedia and some backstory. Yeah. Uh, we get to see the characters in action. We get to see what they are truly about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling, buried deep back here in my don't piss Adrian off brain, that you are not going to like how this uh, transpires. Okay. Uh, we will see. I hope that you're wrong. You're like, no, this is okay. This works. This is good literature. Uh, but you're not going to like it. Well, here, here, here's something. Uh, if, we're, if we're going to go a little bit off of the main rail here, 
you mentioned how big this universe is and how nice it is to get actual stories, not the garbage that was put out on Pottermore Presents. Yes. J.K. Rowling calls you up to say, Salty, you got a whole uh, series about me on the internet, I see that. I'm going to give you the character of, what was Cedric's dad's name? Amos Diggory? Amos. Amos Diggory. Okay. I want you to write a 300-page book. Okay. Do you do that? Do I do that? Yeah. In a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why she hasn't done that. I don't either. And we've talked about this a little bit with the uh, the Star Wars universe. Yeah. Uh, because we like to poke at my terrible love for trashy sci-fi. <laughs> uh, the Star Wars universe has done that. They have opened things up. They've allowed other authors to write in the Star Wars canon. Because George Lucas looked at things and realized he may, if he had the biggest imagination in the world, he couldn't have the time to write all those stories. This is true. Uh, she's siphoning it off. Uh, J.K. Rowling, maybe she's getting to that point. We're seeing with the Fantastic Beast movie, she's letting things be expanded, the Cursed Child play, uh, but she hasn't hit that yet. Right. And Amos Diggory, yeah, there's some backstory, but uh, uh, who doesn't want to read a book about Moody? Right. Anything like that. There's some good books there. I, they're just... Damn you, J.K. <laughs> Damn yeah. you. Uh, anything else you want to talk about here with Harry Potter before we wrap this up? We only have a few more chapters to go. And uh, your friendly reminder, once we have finished Goblet of Fire, that is all the Harry Potter canon that we will be talking this year. We will do Fantastic Beasts. We're going to do Fantastic fun. Beasts. And you will have a review on the movie channel, right? Yes, uh, I will for sure be reviewing the film. I'm there going will be a to... link to the movie channel in the description below. But yes. you will be doing a three-man review, I believe? Hopefully so. I will uh, not be there for this one. Yeah, I don't want to risk there's something in the movie that I don't know about that will ruin something for Adrian. Uh, so I will kick Adrian out and review the film. But this will be the last uh, Harry Potter canon book that we review this year. Fantastic Beasts Where to Find Them is not canon? Oh, it is canon, but it's not one of the seven. Okay. Uh, not one of the seven Harry Potter series. Okay. Um, so December, there will be a bit of a lack of Harry Potter. Well, only only two weeks, though, a I A couple believe, weeks. Right? But we will be right back in January with Harry Potter. Yes. Uh, so don't panic if you don't see it, because we've been very vigorous about making sure that Wednesdays are for Adrian Reed's Harry Potter. <laughs> uh, nothing else you want to hit here, though? You comfortable? You good? We're getting there? Wanna... Um... Is there anything you would like to talk about? Because I've hit all the points I felt that I needed to highlight. We uh, hit chapter 33 very hard. Yes. Was there anything you think that was hidden in chapter 32? Nope. It was pretty cut and dry. <laughs> I'm not kidding you there. It, it is quite... And it's a very short chapter, too. It is only like six or seven pages. Ten. I think they're both ten-page chapters. Uh, but it is quite literally the ritualistic process, process that resurrects Voldemort and uh, Cedric Diggory is killed. Not in that order. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just flip those real right. quick. Uh, but no, I, I'm comfortable. I think we got what we needed to accomplish. Um, Going to be some good conversation on death with characters. Some good conversation with uh, how Amos Diggory is going to deal with this. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, he was very proud of his son. He was one of the few people who was not starstruck by Harry Potter. Right. And now... Harry Potter's outlived his son. Yes. Harry Potter technically got his son killed. Yeah. Um, the... The followers of Voldemort, the Death, Death Eaters. Eaters, how many were there? I can't remember off the top of my head. Were there 13? No, I think you're thinking it was 13 years. He's been gone for 13 years. Are you sure there weren't 13 spaces? Maybe there was. I'm not sure. Seems to me that maybe there were 13 spaces. People have, people have died, though, right? People but have died. People were... are captured. Okay. People didn't show. So someone knows how many there were or how many spaces there were, and they will yell at you in the comments below. I'm okay with that. Okay. It's like calling up the class reunion. You know, some people are dead. Yeah. Some people are in prison. Yeah. <laughs> some people just didn't come. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, if you like this kind of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. We do Adrian Reed's Harry Potter every single Wednesday. And give this video a like as well, because we're finally starting to get into the real meat of Harry Potter here. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Stripped Cover and on Facebook at Stripped Cover Lit.